Okay, I'll take a Corona. And I got a, a Which one's, This one's got a better cover. Both of them are good. What's the difference? No, it's just the cover. There's a lot of negative uh, propaganda and negative uh, uh, publicity being portrayed against Islam and Muslims these days due to the elections. So the whole idea of this event is to reach out to the people, show who we Muslims are, yeah. and uh, what do we represent in the States. Whoa! This place is something. The guy we're going to see speak is Raid Taye. He's a writer and political analyst. He's been a guest on many national and international television programs, including Fox's The O'Reilly Factor. I don't know if that's good. I feel pretty good. They should have snacks, though, I think. Like when I go to synagogue when I was a kid, and you get wine afterwards and some nice cakes. Ooh, did I just say synagogue? That's prejudice, isn't it? Making assumptions based on religion, that's what we're here to transcend. Just because I'm a Jew. I'm a Jew. <laughs> I'll do it later on the mic. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We have read in newspapers that Barack Obama's, there, there are smear campaigns labeling Barack Obama a Muslim. What's the smear in accusing him of being a Muslim. People are not asking that question, and I think it's an important question to ask, and it's something that Colin Powell has encouraged us to ask. And I hope more politicians will be brave enough to ask that question. The Muslim community over here is used more like a, you know, scapegoat. A layman gets this picture that there is these two forms of Islam. One is the moderate Islam and one is the extremist Islam. And usually the extremist Islam is associated with people who are religious, you know, somebody like me wearing a headscarf or somebody with a beard. Is there friction between black Muslims and Arab Muslims in America? Oh yeah, absolutely. There, there, there is some, but I would say that 9-11 uh, has been a real equalizer because basically if your name is Muhammad, whether you're... Uh, whether you changed it or not. In that, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, if you're trying to sometimes make it through uh, a flight line and you're traveling overseas, uh, basically, when it comes to discrimination against Muslims, you know, uh, whether black or, or, or Arab, you know, or South Asian, you know, they're equal opportunity that's employers. Right, that's right. This is a presidential candidate, Barack Obama, who's been accused of being Muslim. Of being, it's, it's, yes. it's sad to have to say he's been accused of it, like I it's know, something that... I know, well... People who claim, who claim that Obama is Muslim, just listen to what this guy is saying. Yeah. I mean, he's saying uh, Jerusalem should be the eternal capital of Israel, for example. Mm. This wasn't even said by any other candidate before. So, uh, and this shows how shallow sometimes people in this country are, that they are not even listening to what the candidate is saying. And they are seeing only his brown color or his weird name. So do you feel like the Muslim community is represented at all in this presidential dialogue? John McCain, when he took the microphone from a woman in his campaign. I remember that. And he said, no, Obama is a decent citizen. He's telling the whole America yeah. that Arab Americans are neither decent nor citizen. Were you born Muslim? No, I was not. What were you brought up as? Jew. Oh, yeah? Yes. Interesting. How's that going over with the family? Uh, not bad, actually. I, I mean, very secular, so not right. really religious Jewish. Right. But, yeah. yeah, me too. I still think even I, yeah, it'd be interesting to see what would happen if I decided to become a Muslim. <laughs> I think Barack Obama gets this completely defensive. Yeah. I think he should be cool. He should be maybe, you know, I, so I have a middle name which is Hussein or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I understand why he's doing that. You know, he wants to win the election. So you give him a pass? Um, he, he, has a, he has his reasons, but his attackers don't have their reasons. Right, right. You know I mean? No Muslim wants to be sacrificed on the altar of political expediency. And I think Barack Obama has practiced that. I think for his own candidacy that he's kind of throwing us under the bus. Yeah. You think an Obama presidency is going to change things for Muslims? 
I'm hoping. I don't know. What, what would it? What would be? What would the change? How would that become a change? Well, the Democratic Party, from from what I understand, they uh, plan to at least you know end the war sooner than the Republican Party. So uh, you know, for the Muslims around the world, that would that would be a good thing. These are the angels. These are politicians we're talking about. Yeah. From a pragmatic political standpoint, uh, I think that many Muslims have have looked at the situation and see that a, a clean sweep with the Democratic Party might be in the best interest of civil rights and civil liberties, not only for Muslims, but for Americans in, in general.